Hello everybody, how are you today? My name is Trevor Slescu, I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies, and today I thought it would be really fun to take a look at this AMT 1963 Chevrolet Impala, and I'll also show you how to build it. So if you're interested in that, let's go down to the bench and check out this amazing model kit. Suddenly it's 1963 again, and today we are going to examine the AMT Ertl 1963 Chevrolet Impala SS. And as I said at the outset, this is again one of those great model kits where I'm trying to collect all the Impalas, and this is one in my series. So this kit came out in let's see, 1996. It's a reissue from an earlier kit, of course. But the pictures are nice. Highly detailed model kit, aluminum hubcaps, detailed interior, and here's the view from the rear. Of course, the hubcaps are chrome plated in the kit, but if you have some paint that dulls it out, they will look aluminum. Of course, the side of the box looks like the top of the box. And now we get back into here. So they give you some specifications in here because they're so nice. Uh, model kit specifications for the Chevrolet Impala SS. The type is a front engine rear wheel drive, two door hard top. Engine is the 409 cubic inch with the W head V8. 409 transmission four speed manual. Wheels are standard SS wheel covers, super sports. There are optional five spoke mag wheels in here. Exterior options are full custom body accessories, including asymmetrical taillight pod, twin scoops. Rolled pan, choice of two custom grills, side pipes, and a trophy. Interior options, tools, custom steering wheel, custom front bucket seats, roll bar, TV, record player with rear speaker boxes, and a rabbit! Parts over 100. Now when they originally made this kit, like I'm not talking about in, back in the 90s here, but I mean like really early, I do believe George Barris, Gene Winfield, and some of the many other customizers that worked with the AMT cat team, cats, the cats from AMT, they contributed individual bits to this thing from their own customs that we were doing at the time. So moving the box lid out of the way, I'm going to grab the instructions and move our parts here. Okay, let's open this thing up. So of course, you get the nice picture of the SS up there. And uh, let's zoom this back. It is back. Okay, cool. Carefully study and understand the entire instruction sheet. And on and on. Proceed to test fit parts. And it gives you all the stuff about using sandpapers and seam lines and all the rest. The stuff you should read if you are a serious model builder. Read and apply. Okay, and here's our engine block. As you can see, it's a little more simplistic. The uh, intake manifold and cylinder head and all that is one piece. This is almost like a snap together in a lot of ways. But this kit would make a good slot car. So this engine, of course, would be easy to do. And note it's got the holes in the side of the engine block for the metal axle to go all the way through. Of course, you get your air cleaner, your belts, and your fan on there. Now here's your wheel options. The stock front wheel and back wheels. And the custom front and back wheels. Interesting to note that the metal axle goes through the actual front wheel and then at the back it goes through the back part of the wheel and the front is a hubcap or however you want to put that <laughs> okay now we get back into the interior bucket if you remember from our Pontiac from last week I said that it had separate molded panels well this is the 60s type 70s type interior where it is one solid bucket with the sides molded in. You just drop in the seat, seat belt, and dashboard and steering wheel and the shifter in there. Or these cool custom seats with the racing seat belt shoulder harnesses. And speaking of racing, you can also add in a roll bar. So as you can tell, there are a lot of accessories and options to the interior here. Now here's the cool parts, and I know I've used the TV in another model <laughs> and the record player, but you get a trophy stand, a, an old TV, some tools, a record player. You can remove the top on there. The speakers for the record player and the mascot, which is your white rabbit. One pill makes you... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so the body 
interior assembly once you get your interior together of course the interior tub the windows you can always cut this bar out of here to separate them the body and the hood and then it tells you how to paint your tail lights and the shaded area is metallic silver it was an aluminum panel in there so now you can see the undercarriage here oh i was wrong the front engine does not the axles do not go through that's why it mounts on the back there there's these two pins that pop in and you glue carefully glue them don't glue your wheels to the wheeled skirt fender skirts uh, also there is this simulated engine here that you can glue in underneath it says if desired but we all know in the slot car world what that means this is the engine plug that goes in here so that you can have your electric motor and stuff back there and when you flip the car over it looks like it's got a v8 without having that V8 in the way of your car and your slot car parts. So now here's the stock version. You just put the front and rear bumper in. Notice that it's got pins in here and holes in that so you could also screw mount this for your slot car guys. Note the license plate decals can be used if the engraved 1963 is removed from the front and rear bumpers. Okay, so now we get into the custom, just regular custom. Now there's a hood scoop, there's a racing fuel cap on there, there's exhaust dumps going into lake pipes, if you want the lake pipes or just use the exhaust dumps. There is a front roll pan with some bumperettes and driving lights and of course custom wire mesh grill going on in there. Then you get a blanked out rear bumper and bumperettes. Then we have the dun -dun -dun Advanced Custom. And this is probably where Barris and Winfield and those guys really poured on the juice back in the day for this model. So you get a custom grill, which looks very much like a 64 Mercury Marauder. And then adding on these custom headlight bezels and whatnot. There's a front valance. There's a different type of hood scoop lake pipes and then ground effects fender skirts or i guess they're not fender skirts but it gives it more of a like a pointed rocket end and then here we've got our asymmetrical rear end you put one tail light in there and then you've got the other four in here on this side and then there's a wire mesh panel that pops in underneath or version b is to use exhaust tips through there cut out the headlight so you got one one and the two exhaust which would twist and go underneath the car in through there and then there's a rear brakes cooling scoop on your hood and the asymmetrical rear bumper so very cool very many options even though the model is rather basic slot car kind of promo type deal so now without further ado let's actually look at the kit parts all right, so here's our review of the 63 Impala. Again, another one of the Impalas in my collection. Now, the body here is really nice. I've got the interior and the chassis and everything all put together. I was starting to work on this kit, so you'll have to bear with me. But again, you can see the uh, hardtop convertible style, just like on the 62 Pontiacs. I do believe GM carried this type of roof all the way up to about 1964. Not too sure about 65 though. The uh, hood has a nice fit on here, as you can see. Very simplistic. I do believe this kit came out in 63 as one of the AMT annuals. You can see some nice ribbing and a little bit of the uh, fire retardant mat underneath here. So quite good detail. Of course you get the uh, Chevrolet script right across the hood there. Looking at the body itself, you can see the words Impala on this piece of side trim, as well as the Impala logo. And across the rear, you get the Chevrolet and the little V. Did any of you guys actually own one of these for real? Write it in the comments below, let me know. Gas filler cap on the driver's side. And nice V8 emblem there saying that it has the 409 cubic inch in it and as well as the little chrome side blocks there now looking at the chassis underneath this is just a one punch so everything is molded in place 
and you get these great big holes under here for the metal axle. Those would be in the stock height location. It doesn't have the uh, little lowering blocks like some of the other kits in this series did. So now we can pop this out of here. For you slot car guys, there's a pin, nice set of pins there, which can be cut off and this drilled through wherever they are, and you can screw mount this to the body. There you can see the indentations. So again, just a one punch, nothing exciting on this side. The uh, engine bay looks quite nice. There is some detail in there, so not too bad. Now we can shell out the interior tub. As you can see, most of it is molded in place. It does have the separate bucket seats and separate dash. Uh, there is some good detail up here, but the problem with molding a bucket is that your winders end up being sort of flat and not very nice looking. And so with the top of the body again, there is not too much going on on the inside. There are two holes here for mounting your mirrors and um, some spotlights or something else. And again, the radiator has a shroud there, but those are your two pins for mounting to a NASCAR type, slot car type chassis, whatever you want to do there. Now, as I mentioned in the video here, I have started to build this. I've got the engine block together, the 409, with that transmission sticking off the back. You can see the separate exhaust manifolds. If I turn it this way, you can note the Chevy bow tie on the uh, valve covers. But, I mean, look at the carburetor. There's no detail. Just the air cleaner pops on top. Very basic. And it's got the... Uh, the four spark plugs in there. Starter motor molded to the oil pan. The, uh, of course, your um, fuel pump and timing chain cover are just molded to the motor. So a bit of filler in there would make a nice difference. Although it could get covered by the fan belt. This pin is where it's going to mount on the transmission and a pin up front. So mounting on the frame. Just down like that. So now we have our seats here, the tops and bottoms. A nice molding on them. And then this piece. Now this is, if you wanted to do a slot car and you've got all your steering mechanism and stuff up front here, you can drop in this fake motor. Or if you just want a hood down display model, there's a uh, pre-built sort of molded in engine for underneath there. Now next up we have the interior components. We've got the front two bucket seats that don't have a headrest. The reason why they don't have a headrest is because that body style, GM had an idea that if you looked through the window you wouldn't see a seat. So it was just a styling feature but ended up being kind of unsafe in accidents because of course you get whiplash. <laughs> However, it's the 60s they didn't quite fully know a lot about that type of stuff or how to prevent it, I guess. Now here we have the Chevy steering wheel, which seems true to the era. The horn ring underneath. And then, last but not least, we have our Impala dashboard. And it's got the long speedometer instead of the round style. And uh, very well done. The next part tree I have is pretty small. This is the air cleaner, the fan, and the pulleys for the fan. There is no alternator bracket down here, but as you can see there is a lot of flash. Keep in mind that this kit came out in 63 and has been through the molds many, many times. And now with this series of kits we get to the real stars of the show, which are the custom components, because there isn't too much in the kit for the normal stuff. So here we've got a whole bunch of tools. We've got some wrenches, pair of pliers, monkey wrench, screwdriver, hammer, and I do believe these are paddles for doing lead work back in the old bodywork days, before Bondo. <laughs> okay, well, Bondo was in the 50s, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, before Bondo was widely used, let's put it that way. So these are for the asymmetrical rear end. This is the three tail lights, as in the instructions, and this is the wire mesh version of this three tail light insert. 
There's the wire mesh long grill there. These are for the front wheels, the axles, and this is the asymmetrical rear bumper part. Now we have more of the car components for the body. This is our rolled pan for the rear bumper, or the front bumper maybe. These are those um, side rear, what do they call them, <laughs> go on the body. And this is our asymmetrical rear end. So you got your one rear tail light here, and then the three would go in here with your, your uh, wire mesh or your grill type inserts. For our final piece of gray sprue, now there are some pieces missing because I used them on something else, like the television and the record player. But this is your seat belts. These are your seat belts, I should say. The rear uh, roll pan, your um, safety harness for your race car. These pieces here are part of the roll cage. There you got your, your uh, steering wheel. These are the headrests that mount inside in the roof. There's your rabbit. This is for your cross flag stand. Um, not sure what these are. <laughs> have to look it up. And then your two different hood and trunk scoops. Next up, we have all the chrome components. And this again is another one of the stars of the kit because of all the great customizing features. So this sort of grill is like your uh, Mercury Park Lane type of grill from uh, the 60s. So there's your side lake pipes. These are additional those so you can have quad headlights. We've got a wire mesh grill up here. We've got some Keystone mag wheels and the thing that wants to fall over. Knockoffs here. These are your bumperettes and whatnot. Then you've got your stock wheels there. These are all the wheel backs and the front and rear bumpers with the grill, the stock ones with 1963 in there. Now let's have a look at these close up. There we go. You can see the nice detail of that grill for the stock grill. And then down here we've got the two custom chrome grills. There's our Keystone Mag wheels. And what else is cool? How about the stock wheels? Then if you flip this over, of course, you see the uh, the way the wheels work. So these two are for the front, for those gigantic pins. And these two are for the back. So next up, we have our clear components. And of course, we've got our windshield and rear glass. And there is a lot of flash on this. And usually what I'll do is I'll saw it off here and here and here and here, and then glue it into the car separately. The red tail lights, now these are just for the asymmetrical stuff. So there's the one that goes in the center of the grill, or the back, and then the three that go along the asymmetrical side. Then here we have our four headlight covers for the uh, custom stuff, as well as the Lucas covers up there. Next up we have our Firestone tires. These are the regular skinnies that have been included in a lot of the MT kits, going right back to the 1932 Ford and whatnot. They do have a nice pie plate around the outside. You can see the Firestone just above my thumb there. And the tread is just basically straight lines, no wavy lines or anything. And here's our decal sheet, which just includes three license plates. Michigan 409 SS. Not sure where this is, just the 1963 up top. So 93 LO215 and the Utah 63 Rabbit. Now, one thing that is missing in this model kit, which is pretty crucial, is a firewall. And um, I don't know why AMT didn't include it with the 63, but this one is from the 64 Chevy. And with a little modification, it can fit into that 50 or 63 Chevy Impala body. But uh, again, yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure why it wasn't included. So this one came from my parts box. And uh, you might be lucky to find one somewhere out there in internet land in somebody else's part box. 
So now that we've looked over the kit and found some of the issues with this version of it, I just want to tell you that the latest version, which is right here, this is the 2019 edition from AMT under round two, their latest iteration of the model. Now this one does have the parts that were missing out of that other kit in it. So that would be the Bill Kishenberry asymmetrical front end here with the special hood in it, as well as the missing firewall. So when you buy this version of the kit that is available on your hobby shop shelves right now, you will find all the missing components that this one actually did not have. So now let's continue on with the video and I'll show you how to correct a lot of the flaws in this kit. Now when I was working on the chrome pieces of our 63 Impala cleaning them up, I noticed that there was a really bad chrome plating job in here, and this hole inside the wheel hub was so thick with uh, shellac and chrome bits that I had to take the 1 8th drill and actually go in and drill this out in the center by hand. And I was lucky that my drill chuck actually fit such a huge drill the little uh, hands thing there. And then the other part is these pins don't really want to fit in either. They're super tight. And as I looked at this a little closer, I noticed that uh, it was a little bit uneven on the pins. So I had to actually use the drill press, or the drill, the electric drill, and just uh, file them as I spun them. So I'll show you how I did that next. So here I've got our electric drill and I've got our little narrow file and the battery is pretty low on this but that's the general idea. Now once that's done, we should be able to take this out. Now the little end here might be a bit thick right now, but this should actually go in a lot better. So if it's still a bit thick on the end, we'll just file the end and rotate it here. Just like that. Now it should go in a lot easier. Yeah, I can feel that's a lot better. So that's sort of one of the things I had to do with this. Now hopefully the newer one by round two is a bit better than the RC2 version that I'm working on here, and that the pegs go in easier. But always remember that you might just need to do these kind of things with your 1 8 drill and your electric drill. Now the other hole you have to drill is with a number 16 drill bit, and that is for the axle into the top of the wheel. What I noticed again was that the chrome and shellac had dripped into the top, so there was no way the metal axle was going to go in. So very carefully I just put the wheel there on the table like that, and then I went straight in with the drill from the top, making sure that I didn't go in crooked or something, because you don't really want this wheel to be going like this in your axle. So I also noticed another thing. See, there's the wheel back there. And I think I got it pretty, uh, pretty level. Here's the other thing I noticed with this. This axle is down in that wheel as far as it can go. And uh, when I slip it through our differential here... Okay, come on. Where's the hole? <laughs> Slipped it through the differential here. See how far it sticks out? Now, with this other wheel on, you'll see that this is quite far away from the uh, edge of the wheel. So there's a lot of side play. You don't want that. You want this wheel to be very tight to the axle, maybe, uh, or the differential, I mean, maybe just about a sixteenth of a millimeter open, enough to put a business card in. So uh, do I have one? Well, I got this package of matches here for some reason. So you really want your wheel to be like that. So when you remove the pack of matches, you have enough so that the play will only be a little bit. That's so you can still spin your wheels. So I do have a replacement axle for this that's a little shorter. It was from the AMT64 Impala kit. 
But if you don't have one, you're going to have to get some side cutters or something and just snip this axle off just a little bit. And uh, that's you're going to have to do that all by eye. So you can see it's uh, probably about a... I don't know if that's a quarter of an inch, maybe about an eighth of an inch. So you need to cut about an eighth of an inch off. Now remember the axle doesn't have to go all the way into the wheel to the very back. There's a lot of room in that shaft there just to, uh, you know, cut a little bit off and have some play room. So, good luck. Now here you can see the shortened axle. This one came from the 64 Chevy Impala, also by AMT. And that's about what we want. So the wheel will go in like that, and then once I pull this one out of the other axle, <laughs> it should just be able to fit on there nice and tight. So here we go putting the wheel on the axle. Now you can go up tight onto there, but as you can see it doesn't really rotate well. So if I just wiggle this just a little bit, see if I can get the matches in there. With the packet, the, the cardboard. Just squeeze it up to the cardboard, remove the cardboard, and there you go. Now I think this is wobbling because the axle's gone in a little too far. So a way to correct that, of course, is just to put a little crazy glue on one of these. Just go in a little bit, let the crazy glue dry, and then uh, once the crazy glue is dry, you can push the other wheel on. And it should work. Here's all our chrome parts cleaned up and ready to go. Now I did what the instructions said to do and I removed that 1963 raised lettering out of the grill and the rear bumper here, as you can see. And I think I did a pretty good job. So when I put my license plate in there, I might have to paint the edges just a little bit with some silver, but the uh, plate will be glued right onto the bare plastic. I'm gonna print up my own British Columbia plates for 1963. Or maybe a year or two later, it all depends. And uh, just cut them out and glue them in there. So there's our grill. Now one thing we're going to do is take this tester's fl uh, gloss black paint, and I'm going to paint inside the back of the bumper and everywhere, especially on here, all with that black, in case you can see up through the wheel openings into the chrome or anything like that. Just makes it more professional looking. Same with here on the rear bumper, all this will be painted with that black paint. And it uh, looks like i got to get rid of some of these little injector pins as well. But that'll all be hidden. And then on the back of the wheel plates, I think I'm also going to paint them with the gloss black. I might spray these when I spray the other components, which would make more sense. Because I'm trying to build this as the stock version of the kit, so there's no sense in having chromed brake drums and everything else on the back. But overall, these wheels did clean up really nicely. And there's where I scraped the paint off. So when we glue it together, you'll get that nice plastic to plastic gluing contact. Here we have all our gray parts after the cleanup step. There's our hood, our body, our interior tub, the bucket seats, the seat belts, the steering wheel, the dashboard. We've got our air cleaner fan and pulley arrangement with the alternator molded on the back. Then I've built up the engine block with all its sub-assemblies, with the exception of these parts. And we've got our undercarriage here and our chassis. So this is going to be satin black. This is going to be satin black. This is going to be interior color. This is going to be exterior color. And our engine is going to be painted Chevy engine red. Now I'll just bring the engine up into the camera so you can see. So there's the transmission and engine glued together. I sanded down all the seam lines and smoothed that out as best I could with sandpapers. Starter motor is molded on the side. We've got our exhaust manifolds which plug in. The entire cylinder heads, intake manifold, carburetor, distributor, they are all molded as one piece. And then our valve cover is just plugged in on the top. And the water pump is part of the two-part engine assembly molded in front. Overall, though, that's what we're looking at. And with the air cleaner in, I did have to drill in a hole in here, just like with the axles, so that the air cleaner would sit nicely down, because it was really a tight fit. And same with the pulleys here. I had to drill holes into them, just so that everything would align up, and that the fan would go through. 
One thing about these AMT kits, both the 64 and 63 Impalas do not have an alternator bracket coming out to align the alternator. So if you're into scratch building, you can always add that in just for more stability. So I'm going to take this apart and go outside and spray paint. It's a nice sunny day. Now here I'm showing two instruction sheets. This one on this side is from the original edition of the 1963 Impala. And this one is from our kit we're building now, which is the 1996 version. Now the first thing that's missing in here is the battery. As you can see, it is not included in the modern kit. And secondly, we are also missing the radiator, the firewall, and the horns and the brake master cylinder out of this kit, which was in the 63 version. But over here, there is nothing, and there's nothing else that refers to it in the instructions. So in order to correct this, I do have a spare firewall from a 64 Impala kit, and I'm going to have to go and search through my radiator box to see if I can find a radiator. The brake master cylinder doesn't really matter because one is molded on here, so that's good. But I will have to make some adjustments so that I'm able to put the hood on because the hood has little tabs. One thing I could do is cut the tabs off and just simplify everything. Or I could actually cut into the firewall with my saw from behind, marking where the little divots are for the hood to fall into, and then gluing it that way, which would be better because then I still have the little hood tabs on the hood, or the hood hinges. So I managed to find a radiator in my parts box and after uh, doing a lot of extensive modifications to it because it had a little thing that overhung so it was supposed to hook onto the rad support. So I clipped that off and I used my sandpaper block and sanded this all flat. Had to clean up the sides because this was from a glue bomb. <laughs> so I had to get rid of the glue. But it does seem to fit down there pretty nicely touches the top of the fan, which is just how you want that fan, sh fan shroud to be on there. And then when I close the hood up, I've got it so that it doesn't interfere with the hood. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it ended up pretty nice. All I need to do now is just, I think I'm going to glue that uh, red. <laughs> Actually, I might paint this separately. Yeah, I think I'll do it that way. Okay, so I'll get all this prepped up and get it ready to paint. So what I have up top is a firewall from the AMT-64 Impala because my 63 does not have a firewall. The firewall down below is the one from the new AMT 4-in-1 kit from round 2. So you got RC2 at the top, round 2 at the bottom. I'm going to uh, lay the firewalls on top of each other and I need to trim down the red and black one here so that it will fit underneath the uh, 63 body. So that's what I'll do. I'll just take the saw and chop it just like it is here, just for simplicity of size and everything. As you can see, this one's a bit flatter than this one, but hopefully things will make up the difference under there and look good in the end. All right, so I got that red firewall and I chopped it down and uh, it's just sitting in here loose, but as you can see, it actually does fit in there pretty well. I know it's black back there, it's hard to see it. Uh, it will have to come forward a little bit and be glued to the front underneath of the cowl here. And the cowl would be painted with the semi-gloss black as well. I'm not really sure if I should paint this thing separate on its own and then just do the touch-up along the top if that would be easier. Or to glue the firewall into the, um, into the car here and then paint it black with a brush. Probably spray. So this turned out pretty good considering that these were missing parts, both the firewall and the radiator, which is back on the other table. So I think this is gonna work out pretty nice. And uh, I was lucky to actually have a spare firewall because without one, this would just be wide open in here and that wouldn't look good at all. So I'm glad actually that my kids got me the new AMT version of the 64 Impala so that I had some reference to go off of with the other one. And yeah, as you can see here, I sawed this flat across the edge and sanded it down just like the other uh, firewall was because this curved out there and there and that was hitting in underneath here. So again, this should look really good. All right, I think that's finally all the parts I needed to do except for the battery in here, which is uh, pretty simple, actually. I have some spares from that battery video that's up here. So uh, 
but I'm going to paint it. Well, I hope you're enjoying this video so far, and if you want to build your own model cars, why not find it on our website first? My name is Trevor Celescu, owner of Monster Hobbies, and you can find us at www.monster-hobbies.ca or by clicking the scrolling link right here. That will take you right to our model car page where you can select on any of the model car manufacturers or actually real car manufacturers that you are interested in, like Ford, Chevrolet, AMC, and many, many more, including European and exotic cars from Japan. So if that seems interesting to you, check out the website right now and let's continue on with our build. So here's our Chevy 409 after painting it with the Chevrolet engine orange. You can see just how nice this actually did turn out. Now the paint here is still pretty wet, but what I'll do is I will paint the tips of the exhaust manifolds with the steel color or the aluminum, whatever I painted underneath, and uh, paint the distributor flat black and the starter motor as well with some white spark plugs. Now check out this color on this seat. This is Tremclad Gloss Sand, and it sure does look nice, doesn't it? Now all I need to do is let this dry, and then I can put the chrome around the seat, which is on this, uh, this back right there. There, you can see that nice ridge. Now this paint is enamel, and it's gloss, so it's going to take about a week to dry. So luckily though, you're not going to have to wait a week to see the results. Here we have all our satin black components, which I have taped onto this cardboard box using some masking tape. And what I do is I take a piece of masking tape off and I just roll it over on itself and then stick it down here with the sticky side out. You can just push all the parts on there and that'll hold it in place while you paint. So I have spray bombed these with our satin black. There's our air cleaner. Now this is stuck in a reversed clothes peg, as you can see. That's our air cleaner. Looks pretty nice. Also got our fan right here. And then our belts and pulleys over here. So what I did is I spray painted these with my hand like this with the glove on. And then when they were still wet, I just put them down on here. But these other components have been taped in. There's our uh, radiator with the fan shroud and the firewall in the back. And these easily just peel off the tape. And there you go. Now, I do believe I'll have to use a brush and just cover this over with some of that trim clad, or sorry, Tester's Gloss Black. But overall, you can see just how wonderful this turned out. Uh, now, I will spray uh, this way and then turn it and go this way. Turn it this way, spray paint this way, and then spray paint this way again, and then give it a one or two, you know, over the top. Just so if any overspray comes up over here, it will melt with the final coat going over the top. And I also will tip the box forward and spray paint, you know, with this at an angle, you know, downward. <laughs> So that's how it looks. Let's take a look at some of the other parts I painted up. Here we have our interior, which is painted in that trim clad sand color. I'm really happy with this color, how it turned out. There's our seats and our interior bucket and tub and our dashboard, the seat belts and the steering wheel. Now this color really looks like the original Chevy color, which looks like this. And that's how I want to do that interior, just to make it all look nice. What I need to do is I need to get some of the tester's sand, the flat sand. I think it's 1168. I don't have a bottle here to correct that with. But uh, I will paint the seatbelts with the sand, and the clip buckles are actually supposed to be this glossy color. The carpet in here will also be painted with the sand. It's going to go up and around this console. And I do believe a lot of the console on here is aluminum, or if not, chrome. And then I've got the floor pedals, which will be painted black. And uh, I guess that's about it. And then there will be chrome details in here, like the SS logo in the center of the seat, and 
Some of this will be hand painted, others I think I'll try to use bare metal foil, which uh, is a nice foil project. If you want to see bare metal foil, check out the link up here. Should be scrolling across for our tips and techs. And then of course our bare metal foil has to go up and around in a strip on this edge of the seat, just like in that picture. Now briefly, just getting back to our engine, I did notice that I might have painted this with the wrong orange. I think this might be a Chrysler engine orange, like Hemi orange or something. I'm not sure because the spray paint I used was an engine match enamel color. And it said, uh, look for the true color on the cap, which of course the cap got lost. So I don't know what it was. But one thing I did notice is these valve covers are actually supposed to be aluminum in this year of car. So I'm going to have to find my aluminum paint and go in and brush them over. And the intake manifold on some of these Chevys is also aluminum, but I think I will leave it the orange since I've already done that. So if I was to build this engine again, I would leave the valve covers off and hook them with those uh, clothes pegs like I did with the air cleaner and then spray them with aluminum or yeah, I guess spray them with aluminum would be the best bet. So the other things is, of course, the distributor is going to be gloss black and all the rest. I think I said that before. So that was just an observation that I made. And there's two little black tags. One says uh, 409 and one says the horsepower of the engine. And they go on top of the Chevy logo. Uh, one's on top, one's on the bottom down here. And here we have the body and the hood, which I have also painted in the sand color. And this is such a neat color, actually. I do like it. Look at how uh, great that is. Isn't that great? Don't you love it? Come on, you love it. You know it. Okay, so there it is there. Look at how nice it came down. This is just uh, one coat, no primer. I did not use primer. Can you believe that? That's like a model kit building sin. So, no, I don't know. Anyway, what I need to do next is I need to paint the firewall, or the, pardon me, the radiator support wall in here with the gloss black paint or semi-gloss just like it came from the factory. And uh, then I need to use the bare metal foil, and I just happen to have a sheet of it here, the bare metal foil just to go in on all the trim in along here and make all that look nice. So, oh, and the other thing is, this panel in a lot of them is aluminum. But overall, I'm really impressed with how this paint turned out. I'm going to leave this body for a few more days, which of course is nothing in your time, just to make sure that the paint is nice and solid and dry before I start doing bare metal foil on it. And for our hood, we actually have a texture in between the ribs on the underside, which indicates that there would be a fireproof mat underneath here. So all this area has to carefully be painted with flat black just to represent that matting. But on top of the hood, it came out really nice for our paint again. We also have the Chevy emblem up front, which will need to be touched in with a fine brush and some silver paint. Hey everybody, this is Trevor Celestia jumping in here again from monster-hobbies.ca. And I just want to tell you, if you're looking for great deals on model car kits, and in fact, all of our items over at www.monster-hobbies.ca check it out join our newsletter and if you go on our website and look on the side over here you'll see something that looks like an airmail envelope click on that and that will get you signed up into our newsletter and what happens is with the newsletter it's sort of like an online flyer it'll have select items and discounts on those items so go over there and do that now and then we'll continue on with our video. Here we have our Chevy 409 after doing all the detail painting. So what I've painted here is the valve covers are aluminum, the carburetor underneath there, let's see, underneath there is steel. Then we've got the semi-gloss satin black for our air cleaner, our fan, and our pulleys. Now this isn't a generator. This is a generator, not an alternator. And generators are also painted with uh, satin black. So I've used gloss black from testers for that distributor and the starter motor. And I notice the starter motor doesn't actually touch into the bell housing. So again, another sort of AMT flaw. There's the white spark plugs on there. 
and then I've got the steel on the bottom. I painted the flange halfway so that there's still some orange touching the steel. Now one thing I did notice on the uh, Chevy engine block in the photo is that these manifolds are also steel. However, from the factory they may have been painted. The thing is, these get really hot, so any paint that's on there usually gets burnt right off. So they would appear steel after, you know, maybe a couple of miles around the town. But overall, I think this is actually one of the better engines that I've actually painted, even though it's missing a lot of things. Now, if you wanted to super detail this engine, I would suggest putting in the radiator hoses. There's an oil breather that's supposed to be up here. Actually, an oil filler that's supposed to be up here. Uh, some of the valve covers had oil breathers on them. And then there'd be a lower radiator hose up in the front. But like I said, I mean, this is meant to be simplistic. One other thing is to scrape the paint off the pins. There's one here. And on your frame, your chassis, this engine is also going to sit in here and here. So use your drill and just drill out the paint just so that you've got that plastic to plastic surface. And the other thing is do not glue your engine in right away. Make sure you got those front wheels with those pins on because that's going to be very difficult to try to stick in after the fact of your motor being glued down. And speaking of the frame here, you can see just how detailed it is. Underneath, if I turn it over this way, there's all our exhaust pipes and muffler system. And I painted this with Tester's Steel. The only downside is that my steel paint is really chunky, so I had to thin it. And I was running some over the edges here just because I got the consistency a little wrong when I was mixing. But I managed to touch up the edges with the gloss black, and you can't even tell the difference. Back here is our fuel cell, which is also painted steel. And remember, the gas tank here is sitting vertically up and down instead of horizontal. So this area back here is actually a sunken area in the trunk. I'm not sure if you put your spare tire in there, but uh, it is sunken. If you take a look at some of the open trunk images on the internet, you'll see exactly what I mean. And getting into the rear axle here, I haven't actually put the uh, tires and wheel on yet, but I wanted to show you how this actually looks. So here I've got like very slight side to side play in that rear axle and the wheels will spin perfectly in here. So again, it is nicely done. If I just turn this over this way, you can see the black painted axle inside. That'll just prevent it from rusting, but uh, it isn't interfering with it actually spinning. What you would use is Again, your drill just to knock off a bit of the paint inside the axle where the hole is here on that differential so that uh, your wheels can spin freely and are not being slowed down by any paint. You want to sort of do the same thing right here in the front just to knock off a little bit of that paint. And like I said before, remember to put in those wheels in the front before you actually put that motor in. Oh, and one other thing. When you're looking at the interior bucket, this of course is going to be sitting here on the chassis. So if we flip it over, you want to make sure that you're going to paint up in front here with the gloss black so that this is actually hidden. So that's what we will do. So basically from these front two dots where the seats are going to be, if you uh, paint gloss black from about here up and into the tunnel a bit, just again, so that when you're looking at this from underneath, you don't see the, uh, well, where you haven't painted, because that doesn't look really professional. If you have intentions of entering this in a model car show, again, that's going to show like that. And nothing's going to hide that, that bald area. So always paint that over so that nobody sees it. Here's my mock-up of the chassis with the engine. It's just pressed into place right now. It's not glued down. There's our front and back wheels. Now, I don't know if I'm going to put the white walls on here or just leave them as a black wall. Black wall was kind of a cheaper tire back in the day. But then again, it also has a sort of air of sportiness to it. You can see that I haven't painted the hubcaps yet. That's coming up. But overall, the fit is pretty good. There's only one discrepancy, is that those exhaust pipes don't actually hook up to the exhaust manifold. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, that's sort of the flaw. 
And then where it's chrome in the front there, I'm going to paint that over with the gloss black so it looks like what's in the back. Here's our Impala body after I painted on the black up front and the aluminum into the back. I still have to put it on the bare metal foil, but I just wanted to show you that you make sure that you paint that headliner in there before you start putting the whole body and everything together. Overall, this will look good. I need to scrape off the paint once it's dry right in that area to attach our radiator. And I need to put a second coat of aluminum in there just to thicken it up a little bit. But that's basically what you want to go for just before we put on that bare metal foil. Another thing I noticed is that in the pictures of the real Chevys, this little area here is actually still body color. It is not painted gloss black like I thought it was, but the uh, gloss black firewall does hang underneath. Here's our interior bucket painted up to a point. I just wanted to show what the paint color was. This is Tester's Flat Tan 1167. That's what I've used for in the carpet here. And then I've used my gloss black on the pedals. And up in the front, like I was showing from before, this area is going to be silver and same as on the door panels, a bunch of the trim and whatnot. I just have to take another look at the reference picture and see how it's actually applied. Here's the completed interior bucket. And as you can see, I've got that dashboard in there and the seats and the seat belts. Bare metal foil going up and around the seats there. The rest is all hand painted. That is Tester's Silver, the old Model Master stuff. Now on the seat belts, I added a little bit of a brown wash onto there just because they really didn't have much definition like the carpet has. So uh, I wanted to just to muck them up a little bit. I couldn't figure out what color that SS logo is down on the floor. But this is pretty much, well, just like the two illustrations that I had before. The one picture of the real tan interior, and then the artist drawing version of it. Then underneath I've got it painted black. The only thing I don't like about the seats in this kit is that they don't really glue to the floor itself. They have these pins which go through, and of course one busted off in the back here. And uh, that's never any good. But... Overall, this will look really cool once it gets down on that chassis and when we can see it inside the actual car. Here we have our completed 1963 Chevy Impala from the older AMT kit. And here I've got actual printed British Columbia license plates, just like the ones you'll find up here on that tutorial video. I also painted in the Chevy emblem on the hood and the little turn signal lamps. I use that uh, wash technique, which we will take a look at right there, for the front grille. Now the hood does sit up just a little bit, and I think the reason for that is because of my uh, little radiator cap right in here. And that is a little unfortunate. I, I could try to relieve the underneath of the hood a little bit. The other thing I noticed with this is that the front bumper is really, really tight onto the body. I actually scraped a bit of the paint trying to get it on underneath. So um, that was sort of a drawback. And I noticed that it also doesn't quite go up to the very top of that fender. And uh, I'm not quite too sure why. I did have to really, uh, you know, clip and rig that thing in. But this is the best I could do with the old kit. So there's the black wall tires. I was debating on putting white walls on there, but eh, I don't know. It does kind of give it more of a, you know, like a pedestrian civil, uh, civilian type of look, I guess I'm trying to say. I did paint inside here with the wash again. I was going to do the SS look emblems. They're actually red, but I didn't really get around to it. There's the emblem on the side I painted. The Impala back here, I painted it solid silver in that circle, and then I realized that was kind of a mistake. It's supposed to have the uh, paint through it. It's supposed to be a ring with S's in the center, but oh well. <laughs> Here's the back end coming around. Now I did use the Tester's aluminum in here, and then I painted it with the Tester's chrome silver. There is a bit of a difference. See, if you look at the door latch button, and then we've got our emblem on the back, which again was hand-painted, and the duplicate BC license plate. 
BC license plate really turned out nice. It gives it that historical, you know, close to home feel. I grew up in British Columbia and moved out to Alberta. So uh, that's like sort of coming home. The Alberta plate for 64 was just black and white, which wasn't quite as exciting as the blue. There's our fuel door. Remember our gas tank is in the back. Now, sorry, I had a little trouble with the uh, alignment of our video. So I'm trying to move this when you turn it to get it perfect in the, in the circle there. But you can see I painted the door handles. That's with the uh, trim clad or testers aluminum paint in there. Painted along the bottom edge, although you can't really see it with aluminum or the chrome. Same with the window pillars. I found that with the windows, I did try to bare metal foil around here. My bare metal foil seems to be sort of thicker, so it's kind of chunking. My blade isn't quite as sharp as it probably should be. So I painted down here on the bottom with the silver paint, and that actually ended up being a lot better. So I'll take the hood off and we can take a look inside. There's our engine bay with a great 409 painted with the Chevy engine red. You can see my radiator in there with the cap on top. And in the back there's a firewall and the uh, windshield washer bottle. Now the bottle should actually be on the other side of the radiator, but you know, what can we do? I was going to put a battery in there just right about here, but the problem is that I have to cut a big half circle out of the battery in order f for it to fit up against that wheel well. So I don't know, I started to run out of time with that, so maybe I can fiddle with that in the future. Uh, as we move across here, we can get a little bit of the interior. You can see the seat belts on the seat and that wonderful steering wheel and dashboard. Overall, I did have fun building this, even though I had to really pirate parts from other kits just to get that radiator and the firewall back there. But overall, I think I did a pretty good job. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Here's our Chevy from underneath. You can see all the nice detail work the gas tank, the ends of the exhaust pipes, the exhaust system, and our engine sitting underneath there. Well, I hope you found this unboxing and building of the model kit to be helpful to you. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and a like, and subscribe as well so that when I make another video, you are the first ones to see it. So if you've built this model kit before in the past, please let us know how you enjoyed it in the comment section down below. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.